So now what we can try to do uh, is to start implementing uh, all the security features starting from the server, of course, where most of the work uh, is done. Okay, the, the text of the exercise already tries to guide us through the different steps. Uh, as usual, I copied on week 13 the same exact project that we had uh, last week. So, we, okay. Let's download everything. And now we, add, we need to add some uh, uh, packages to the server side. Uh, we need to install uh, Passport, Passport Local, and uh, Express Session. Is that uh, the name of the package? Uh, why is that uh, here? Express Session, yeah. Express Session. Okay. And so we can work on the server index.js and we add uh, these extra features. So const sessions or app.user. Okay, let's let's do one const session require. It's called uh, Express session. Okay, so we need to load the session before so that passport can hook into the sessions. Uh, and uh, app.user session. And session is an, op an option object where we must at least set this secret phase. Secret. Anything. Okay. Uh, we could also be fancy and use a, um, a random number generator for for the session signature. Every time the application starts, we'll create a new secret string, and so we'll encrypt and sign. Not encrypt. We we'll sign the, the the cookies in a with a different uh, value, okay? Um, uh, what happens uh, during the exam that uh, sometimes uh, I have uh, two people that use the same secret because maybe they don't modify the default uh, template for the project. And so when I close one server and I go to the next project by seeing the other person's project, I'm still logged in with the other users credential because uh, uh, the browser still remembers a cookie from the same server address uh, and uh, but this is just a corner case where I'm, I'm trying you know, several several projects in a row okay so this is the enabling of, of the session now is turn of passport uh, is uh, required Passport, and in particular, we must tell password that it can store the information inside the session. Okay, so uh, tell to password that it can authenticate on the session as a middleware, and it will parse the session information that gives you the request.user uh, function. And uh, uh, the same at, the, at this point, uh, since we are configuring passport, we, are con we can configure also the, the strategy. Okay, so we have passport, we are using a local strategy. Require passport local. And then we initialize passport app.use you see we are sort of copying and pasting the the code from here uh, we, we first focus on the concept on, on the why but then the how is sort of okay strictly new 
local strategy. And this local strategy needs a, a callback verification callback function. Okay, so it's a, a callback function called the username password callback. And we need to implement it here. Okay. This is used at the login point. And then we, now we write it uh, later on. And uh, we store the results of the verification into the session. So we need to tell password to store the information in the session. Up to use session. Uh, sorry, passport authenticate session. Passport authenticate the method is session. And since we are storing something in the session, we not, we must create must uh, specify the serialize and deserialize methods, like we have here. Serialize user and deserialize user. Passport serialize user with a callback user uh, callback and password this realize user user callback Okay, so the local strategy needs to do uh, the verification. And then serializing the user data into the um, application. We need to decide which information that we want to store. What is the, the, our user object, basically? and uh, how to verify that. And all, of, all, all, all this information here is related to the structure of the database. We have. How are we storing information in the database? And as I showed you before, I used a very simple structure. So this is not increasing the font size. No? Okay, it's a um, table with just ID email, so the user main, name, password, salt, and name, and full name of the person. Which information do we, win, do we need to store into the session? So imagine we, we, we are making a query in the database with a given user name. We do the login, and after login, which of this information do we want to remember? I would say everything except password and salt. First of all, they are not useful, and second, the less they go, uh, they, they are used, the, the, le the less they are available, the better, okay? So we don't risk of leaking some information. So the user object that can, we can store into the session may contain the ID, the email, and the name. It doesn't need to have any extra information, okay? So uh, we store, we imagine that the user can have uh, all the fields, maybe it's come from the database with all the fields, uh, because we need all the fields actually to um, validate it, but we want to store only those three. So we can use the callback with uh, a no error and uh, the object that we want to store in the session that only contains the ID from user.id, the 
uh, sorry, email from user.email. And finally, the name from user.name. So we need to, we, we want to select which fields got, get stored into the session. And remember all these fields, this object we are storing here is available as request.user throughout the application. Deserialize is the opposite operation that starts from an uh, object into the session and uh, creates the objects uh, in to be uh, stored into request.user. In this case, we can just return the same. Imagine we have a lot of information about the user we want to store maybe in the session only the ID, and when we want to extract the information, maybe instead of just giving the ID, we want to extract information, so we want to make a query in the database. It was, this would create a lot of queries, but ideally we could also, he, in this point here, have or complete with some more attributes or more information just than just what is stored into the, um, into the session. Or, Maybe the session can only store simple objects. We want to create an object with all methods and so on. And so use a constructor function to create an object starting from these parameters. This is the point where we can do that. To, to rebuild, so take an object from the login and store it into the session, and take an object from the session and give it to the API calls. And then the verification function is, uh, should work in, at the database level. Okay, so maybe we create, we, uh, all, the, all the database operation were in, in a qidao.js file. Maybe we create another file specifically for, um, or just have two methods here for, uh, oh no, I'll say, let's create another file, it's cleaner new file, user DAO, so we can also uh, reuse it. Where we can put the method, this function, uh, for validating the user. A method that uh, receives the user credentials and tells me whether they are valid or not, or maybe even better, it tells me all the information about that user. So something like check user. How oh, it's called in the slide, just for continuity. It's called uh, get user. Okay, get user. With a username and password. And we export this on the other servers. Ah. And what is this function doing? This function should uh, query database, query database, and check <coughs> whether the whether the username exists. and the password hashes to the correct value. If so, return an object with full of your information. So this would require doing some simple query of the database. We can just, uh, we have the username, so we can select the row containing that username. Maybe it's 
don't know where are these things, so I... Yeah, maybe I have a... Select all from user where uh, email is equal to what was our name new polito.it okay we want to make this kind of query when we, we provide the username and get all the information if the username was wrong of course uh, we get we don't get any error, but we don't get uh, the, the the result error. So we can use this as a query in our const SQL to this kind of query, and of course email equal to question mark and we use the db.all method for uh, running this query extracting all the list of the results and check whether the results are one or zero and if it's one then we do all the check with the cryptography Um, the b.all but we don't have the db object in the DAO we had the, the db object that we created by linking to the database uh, I don't want to create another connection to the database from the user DAO, so let's share this object here, right? Otherwise, we have two connections with concurrent access to the same database. They are working on separate tables, but uh, I don't want to create problems. So let's create another file, just a DB. It just creates an export to the database itself. So I'm pulling this out of the QA and I start saving this here and exporting. So in QA DAO, we just uh, import DB from this DB file. And also on the other DAO, we can just simply, so that the connection to the database is only created once. Mm -hmm. Also in DB.js, not DB, sorry, the user DAO, uh, at the beginning we have to import DB object. So we can use db.all with uh, uh, okay with the query and why uh, Thinking that uh, yeah, we, I need to wrap it. So. Or just a bit of get probably it's easier because I only need one result. So where am I? Sorry, the bit of get. Uh, so get user is an asynchronous function. So uh, let's make it async. Uh, no, 
I need to return an explicit promise because the SQLite doesn't work uh, well with the async. So return new promise, resolve, reject. Okay, and then inside the promise code, we make the query. So db.get. Uh, db.get uh, uh, with a SQL with the parameters which is the username and with a callback no, like we did here string ID and the callback arrow row And we have the code for handling the row. Then, if we have an error, let's just copy the structure that we have here. Something like this. But it's not just simply like this. It will be more complex, but let's start from this. So at this point, uh, if everything is okay, we have our row that contains information about the user. Now, we need to check the password. And we can do what we did in our test program before. These lines here. Uh, where is my user? Okay. Of course, I need to import crypto. And uh, password is password. Salt uh, comes from the database, is row.salt. Computed hash is the return value that I'm recomputing from the current password. And the salt that we just query from the database corresponding to the specific user. We are comparing this, uh, and uh, so the computed hash, and this database hash is actually row dot hash. Okay, so I'm encrypting the password. I can do that only after I, write, I read the salt from the database. Then I have a computed hash code that I compare with the row.hash coming from the database. If they are equal, if they are equal, then we can resolve the promise with the user object. If equal, We can resolve with the user, a uh, row that contains all the fields about the user. And then the serialized function will take this object and store some fields into the session. Else, it's a problem, reject with some reason like. Uh, So the error was already, sorry, the, this error was already captured here. So the error, query errors are there. This kind of uh, rejection is for invalid username or password. So we have this get user that returns either, or it can only return an object describe the user or it will fail with error messages we have also an error here that we should capture before doing the rest uh, so if error again we can reject 
in an error message that will be an encryption error maybe the length uh, or the salt is not valid yeah Else. otherwise I can try to do all the rest like this yes This is testing the password. We use the username to select one row from the database. And then we, here we are checking the password. So we are checking that password for that specific username. Okay, if otherwise it wouldn't uh, exist. The query should not, uh, the, the, the get should give, give me an error if the user is missing. So to try it, we should maybe implement a very simple API and so we can test it from HTTP to see what happens with some combination of username and password. So before injecting all the password and so on, let me go to index and add one post API login. Okay, and then I can just simply extract from the request. Uh, I'm not using password, passport yet, and trying just to validate this. So I can extract from the request uh, the username of request.body.username and password from request.body.password uh, let's make it a sync and then we can wait uh, we can call this uh, user is uh, try user by querying the database, uh, we need to load uh, the user DAO. User DAO dot get user with this username and the password. catch error okay so if it's okay we can return this object just to see what's happening okay it's not the right way of doing the login but just for, for having a test point let maybe let's call it test login and then we will remove it at the, at the end but for debugging uh, it will be a re uh, response.json user so let's see what comes out. And in the other ways, response dot uh, status 500 dot uh, send error to message. Uh, Await. I made it a sync and didn't remember why because I forgot to leave a wait here. So if if it's okay, I can start the server and it crashed, of course, because SQLite is not defined. It's not defined. Ah, okay, it didn't import it, sorry. Uh, 
here and also in the user DAO. Up to use, uh, maybe I wrote it too soon. Yeah, sorry. Uh, up to use should come after I have the app. And after I have the JSON also. Okay. Save again. Can we use app before initialization? But app before initialization, and here we here. Ah, okay, also this one. Sorry. the choose requires a middleware function uh, 37 for the moment let's command this up okay they are just warning about the session okay so now we can open our test file. And try to test login. Post. To slash uh, test login. We must send uh, a JSON, so with a content type uh, of application JSON, and the body would be username. Let's try to send the right one. From the database, it was uh, new at polito.pt, and the password would be password. So let's see what happens. Uh, Bodu, okay, in the JS 46. Body. Hmm. Mm -hmm. db.get is not a function. Okay, we are getting closer. db.get is not a function. So we went here. Okay. DAO DB So wait DB is required DB I did something wrong here DB new SQLite database. I export in DB, importing it back with the same name. What is DB? Mm -hmm. 
database. It's a database object that is not being initialized. Why didn't it run? So let me make a stupid thing just to, to resolve it right now. Let's make a second one. Yeah. They are importing issues that okay. Now we have something. At uh, in the script. Uh, the first argument was your time string or buffer or something like that. We are in the user. This computation, maybe, let me check. Then we go forward. If I, if I can solve it right now, we go forward with the rest of the application. Console.log uh, row. Okay, the row is here. Password and salt are there. And now we have a problem. What did they do wrong? Computer hash is a. Let's see also this one. This is a buffer. And the first item will be of type string or an instance of buffer. Received undefined. Who is undefined? Computer hash buffer from row dot hash. Row dot hash is existing. Row dot password. Okay. That's our user. Sorry for the, but it's normal. Okay, so right now we have a good <laughs> mechanism for checking the user if it has a good password. If I change the password, I should go send the request again and uh, receive an error. I don't know why I don't have an error message, but at least I have an error there. Hmm? If the password is wrong. And uh, if the password is correct, I have the user. If, the, if there are no user, oh, I have a problem here because row is, a, row is undefined, so I should check also that condition. In the case the query doesn't return anything, is the callback is called with row as an empty value. So I should also check that as an error. So if uh, here in the callback, is row is empty, because here it was empty, undefined. So if not row, I should uh, reject uh, with uh, in value the name of password.
as I do in all everything else. Okay, so now it should work also with a non-existing username. And gives me an error, of course. Okay, so this is the code that we can use. These uh, uh, get user does all the work uh, starting from username and a password and gives me the user or an exception. This is the code that we can use inside the verification question, verification function. Yeah, that we still haven't implemented. Okay, so local strategy, let's go back. We have to implement this local strategy, password.use new local strategy by passing a function. So new local strategy, I'm passing a function, and this function should uh, uh, call this DAO method that we already, that we just defined, okay? So it's uh, DAO dot, it was user DAO dot get user, user with username and password. And then we have uh, the two options. It went right or went wrong. If, if it went wrong, right, it gave me the user information. Otherwise, we have some error to process. And in, in the different cases, we must call the callback function. If everything is okay with the null, otherwise uh, with, a, with an error message. So callback, uh, with example. If the user is okay, uh, we call the callback with null, sorry, null and user. This is the, the normal case. Otherwise, okay, this, uh, there we also have a case in which the user, uh, fa the login failed. Okay, maybe for example, we can just put them together. So in this case, it was okay, so null, and then user. Otherwise, call back with the error. The first parameter is not uh, uh, null, and so it will contain the error message. Hmm? We have the three cases, valid user, null, plus user. The third case is just giving an error. There are other two cases in which uh, um, login failed or, but we can, we, they, it requires some more testing, but for the moment we can leave it like this. App.use requires a middleware function, yes. And isn't this one a middleware function? Local strategy. What did I do wrong? Passport.use. Ah, no, it's, sorry. My mistake. It's not app.use, but passport.use. And registering an internal middleware to passport. My fault, as always. Okay. So once we set all of this, we can implement the real login page. Okay? And the real login should be a post of real login. Okay? App the post API login using all the verifications, uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Passport of the authenticator, you should do everything. Mm. 
dot authenticate uh, local and then we have the usual call request response And we should be here only if uh, the authentication is successful. So maybe we just have a look at the request.json. You see, request.user should contain the information about the user. Let's try to dump it out. So all the extraction of username and password should already happen automatically. And calling the get user is done in the verification function in theory. Let's see in practice. It's not a test login, but will be the real login. Okay, it says with the user object that we just got from the database. If I change something, I will get a 500 with some error message. In value username and password, you see, well, the, message, the, the error message that we wrote. And on top of that, we have this, the server is setting a cookie that will help the server to remember the result of this authentication. The cookie was already sent before, but now it's interesting because we have some user data. By the way, this information about the user could be useful to the client. We have a post login form and the result value of the, the post, uh, we, we also have a body on the response from which we can extract some information. Okay, maybe not all of this uh, should be fast. Uh, we should filter what we want to respond, okay? And so also the client uh, would know the user ID, for example, or the full name of the user, because right now the, the client only knows the email. Now we also have the full name to display on the icon, on the avatar page, and so on. And the user, the, the, the client side will store that into a state variable or maybe in a context state variable because maybe it's needed in different parts of the application after the login. But this is normal React behavior. I store the information about the user, so I have a state somewhere in the application on the front end that will tell me I'm logged in or not. And so I will change my rendering according to that. Also, some routes will not be displayed if I'm, if I'm not logged in and so on. And just to close, uh, we need to protect some, uh, some APIs. And OK, we need to configure the course options, but not, not from coming down from the, from the um, VS code. Uh, we don't need that. So we need to do that, but uh, let's see how to protect all the, rest, all the APIs. We should add this auth is authenticated at the beginning of the routes we want to protect. So let's take, uh, I don't know, for example, the upvote. Okay, if I want to protect it, we just add a middleware uh, like uh, request is authenticated. Sorry, uh, we, we should create this middleware somewhere that will check is authenticated. Let's write it there at the beginning before so const is log is a function or is a middleware so request response next they will simply call if 
request dot is authenticated I'm okay otherwise I can send an error So I can add this middleware is logged, for example, into the vote. And in theory, it should allow me, right now, I should be authenticated. So I should accept my vote. No, not authenticated, go away. Because we started, so let's try to log in. Send request, uh, a vote. Uh, okay, the bit of this, we have the same problem with the database uh, as before for the importing, I need to fix that. But in the second case, uh, what, what is happening is that the um, VS code is remembering the cookie too. So after logging, I have the cookie, the second time the cookie went through and it try to call the database method with failed for an importing problem that it will fix uh, okay in the final version but we saw that it's actually allowed this uh, api to be called and the other case was rejected okay so i need to some, some clean up and some refactoring but these are the main points uh, after we do we do all the the hard work the rest is quite easy because the login method is always the same. We just need to decide which fields you want to in store in the object. And uh, uh, protecting, protecting uh, API calls, so you just uh, use log. And if you want to protect a group of call of um, API calls, just put some use somewhere. And so all the API above this, this line are not protected and all the APIs below this line are protected so you can group them and for all them the middleware will be, will be injected and inserted so you just we just need to reorganize and decide which one are protected or not or just go and add them one by one okay then of course we still have the login component to, to implement but it's just a simple form and uh, Will uh, I will publish the, the, the complete project uh, in the next days? Okay. Okay. So thank you. Probably we'll meet at the exams. Remember to fill the questionnaire if we you haven't done it yet, and uh, have a good summer.